Did you know you could take your Procreate illustrations, bring them into Photoshop, and create seamless repeat patterns in real time? That's what we're covering in this week's video, so let's get started. The first thing we need to do is take our illustrations from Procreate and bring them into Photoshop. I've created some simple foliage doodles for this example using my streaky paintbrush from my Acrylic Lovers brush set. This canvas size is 2500 pixels by 2500 pixels at 300 dpi. I'm working in the Display P3 color profile, but if you're on an older iPad and don't have access to that, then the default sRGB color profile works perfectly fine. The other important thing here is you want to make sure that each element that you paint is on its own layer. This will make it just much easier to manipulate when we're creating our pattern in Photoshop later. Now we can export it. Hit your wrench, share, and choose PSD. You can either airdrop it or you can email it to yourself. Now that we have it exported, I will meet you in Photoshop. We're in Photoshop now. I just brought in that foliage PSD file. I've opened it up. And the first thing we need to do is convert each layer into a smart object. By doing this, you'll retain the edge quality of your individual elements. That way, if you're rescaling or rotating while we're creating our seamless pattern, which we'll be doing a lot of, that will maintain the quality, which is something, unfortunately, you can't do in Procreate yet. So in order to convert your elements into a smart object, all you have to do is go to the layer, right click on the layer, and then choose convert to smart object. So I'm going to come through each one of these and convert each one into a smart object. Now all of my layers have been converted into smart objects and you can tell if there's a smart object just by looking at the lower right corner of your layers thumbnail. Now comes the fun part where we get to convert all of these elements into a seamless pattern. So in order to do that, we're going to utilize Photoshop's pattern preview tool. To get to that, all you have to do is go view, pattern preview and then hit OK. And now suddenly we can see all of our elements repeating across the screen. So if I zoom out here, I'm hitting command hyphen or control hyphen on a PC and you can see how that's repeating. I can zoom really, really far out. So let me come back in. I'm hitting command plus or control plus on a PC and this is our pattern square. So anything that extends beyond it is going to start repeating into these repeats next to it. So all I have to do, if you come up here where auto select is, turn on auto select and that will allow you whatever you click on, you can drag immediately. That way you don't have to try and find an individual layer as you're working. What I like to do is just start moving these apart a little bit to get them a little breathing room now that I've got all my elements in here. I can decide like maybe I like this one and I want a repeat of this one. So all I have to do is hold alt on my keyboard and then drag it. You can see already, I'm glad that this did this. When I dragged it down here, it selected the one up here. So Photoshop kind of decides which one you get to edit as you're working. So even though I pulled the copy down here, it's telling me I need to adjust this one up here. So you can tell because that's where the square is. If I deselect, I'm gonna reselect here, Command T or Control T on a PC for a free transform. And now I can rotate it around and you can see how it's repeating in all of these repeats as I do this. You can see it already told me that it wants me to adjust this one instead of this one. So that kind of throws me off every now and then when that happens, but just be aware that that does happen. So this part can get a little bit lengthy because it depends on how much you want to adjust or how many elements that you're working with. I like to fuss around quite a bit in this part, so I will be here for a little while moving things and rotating them and seeing what I like. Because we converted everything to smart objects, our edge quality is going to be retained through all of these adjustments that we're doing. So I'm going to do another copy right here. And remember, whenever you want to make a copy, you're just holding Alt on your keyboard, clicking and then dragging, and that'll make a copy. And when you are making copies, something to just keep in mind, this is called a scatter style pattern. What that means is you just have a bunch of elements and they're all scattered around, basically. That's exactly what you think it is. But when you're placing things, if you're creating a scatter style pattern as well, when you're placing things, you just want to be really aware of when you make a copy of an element, like this element's a pretty dominant element in the pattern. So I don't want two that are right next to each other. So I'm just being really aware of my proximity of these two as I'm placing them. I can zoom out whenever I want just to kind of see how my pattern's coming along and then just continue moving and adjusting things. Let's zoom out and see. Everything feels pretty well scattered. I'm looking for any obvious repeats. So if I have like lines that are becoming really noticeable in it, I'll always try and adjust those things. One last check. I like constantly zooming in and out to make sure everything feels balanced and that I'm not getting too many feelings of squares happening. That's like the worst part about making a pattern is you spend all this time, you get it all balanced, then it's 
it's still like you see that repeat happening. If you caught my video a few weeks ago with illustrator style patterns, you know that there are different types of patterns. This one is considered a full drop pattern. So that is one massive limitation with Photoshop's pattern preview tool right now. You can only make full drop style patterns versus the half drop or half brick. And if you'd like a refresher on the different pattern types, I have a free cheat sheet. I'll put it right below the like button. It's got all the different types of patterns with examples and it's super handy. So that's a free download and you can find that right in the video description. So this feels really good. I wanna show you how you can export this and save this as a Photoshop pattern file now. That way you can reuse it in the future and that way you can also maintain your pattern square. So right now it's on a white colored background, but we want it on a transparent background. That way if you wanna put it on any different different colored background in the future, you can do that really easily. All you have to do in order to have a transparent background is you just turn off the visibility of your background layer in Photoshop. Just like that, we have a transparent background. Now we need to save this as a pattern file. So in order to do that, you're going to come up here and go to Edit, Define Pattern, and we're just going to call this one Foliage. Now we'll create a brand new document. So I'm gonna go file new. I'm just going to make this a letter size. We'll do eight and a half inches by 11 inches. Hit create. Now, if I double click on the background layer, right now this is a white background. Let's make this more interesting. We'll make it pink. So I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm going to set the background color just by hitting command delete or control backspace on a PC. And now if I double click on this layer zero, I can bring up my layer styles palette. And then if I come over here to pattern overlay and check that, I'll toggle this down. These ones are all the default ones that come with Photoshop, but here's the new one that we just saved. So I can just click on that, hit okay if we want it nice and big like this, but we can scale it down a little further if we want to, just by coming over to the scale slider. I'm gonna put in 25 and see what that looks like. Let's see what 50 looks like. I like 50, so I'm gonna hit okay. Maybe we change our mind and we don't like the pink background. I'm gonna eyedropper this darker blue and I'll just make it a little bit darker. So just like that, we can test out our pattern and see how it looks on different colors. Now, if you wanna save your pattern square, you'll wanna make a document file new that is the same size as your original canvas size from Procreate. So this one was 2,500 by 2,500 and I'll hit create. And then once again, double click on the background layer and then double click again. And then we can hit pattern overlay and just make sure that this is applied at 100%. And now this is a true pattern square right here. And then you can change, you can still change the background color on here if you want. But that's how to access that because unfortunately, if you come out of the pattern preview, this is another big limitation with Photoshop, is if I go up here and go view and come out of the pattern preview, as you see everything right here in my square, if I exit that, some of them start missing. So it's super weird that they don't leave them all in there. So that's why I go in and I make a separate square that is the same size. And you can see how like this one's getting cut off up here, but it's repeating right here. Everything is seamlessly repeating now. You can see the edges. Here's where it continues, this top part, this part connects. So that's the workaround for that limitation. If you'd like to learn more about what you can do with Procreate Patterns, then you'll want to watch this video next. Once again, that free pattern types cheat sheet is right below the like button, and I'll see you next week.